Hi children, today I'm going to show you how to fix my bicycle front wheel but uh, before that I just want to show you all the tools that I have and this is for the cutting tools for the metal and also the wood and this is the aircon meter and gas to refill the house aircon gas uh, just in case your house aircon is not cold oh, well, this is my welding machine and this is my uh, safety tools uh, for me to go up to the roofing just in case there's some leaking to set up myself and all this is the cable and this is the guiding machine, this is the power tools, you can all push over here. Today now I'm going to show you now to how to uh, remove my front wheel using the right tools. I need to use the spanner, number 10 and also 15. Okay, first thing you need to do is remove the brake cables, okay? So I'm going to use number 10 to remove my brake cables. After that, then I got to use the spanner number 15 to remove the pin nut. I can show you, it's very easy. When you use the right tools, it's very easy. So, you can see over here, right children? Oh yes, I remember you all are learning creators tools. You will learn there are many tools for you to create effectively. Before the lesson, let acknowledge the presence of God and worship Him. I just say it's time to watch online service together. You see all of them are right here indeed, right? Hi! Okay, uh, I think Wally is a bit afraid right now, but it's okay, I'll find him later. <laughs> okay, guys, do you remember that we need to acknowledge God in everything that we do? Yeah, including this one. So, why don't you stand up on your feet and then let's do it together. The same verse. Ready? One, two, three. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. Good job! You did it! Nice one!
God, thank you for keeping us safe during these difficult times. Father, bless our online children's services. Bless all the teachers and children who participated in it. Father God, may you touch all our hearts that we are able to understand the truths and all that has been taught to us. I pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. children today our powers is taken from the scripture of mark chapter 11 verse 24 therefore i say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them let's recite this together therefore i say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them Children, we need to believe that we have the answers to our prayers before we actually see them. Faith is believing you have something even when you don't see it. It's believing that you are healed because God said so even if your body is in pain. It's believing that you have the money to pay the bills even when your wallet or uh, bank account is empty. Believing before you receive the answer is called faith. Let's repeat the power verse one last time. Mark chapter 11 verse 24 Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Hey children, our topic for today is prayer tools. Firstly, we're going to talk about pray believing. We have all heard someone say, I'll believe it when I see it. What do they mean by this? They mean unless they see it first, they're not going to believe it is real or really going to happen. If the person who is telling you they are going to do something has a history of lying, it would be smart to say, I'll believe it when I see it. It's because they are not trustworthy. But what about when it comes to getting our prayers answered? Can we trust God to do what He says He will do? The Bible says God is not a man that He should lie. If He promises us He would do something, we can trust Him to do it. But to be honest, all of us at one time or another have prayed a prayer that did not get answered the way we wanted it to or thought it should have been answered. God has given us many tools to use when we pray. One of those tools we learned earlier was praying in tongues. A second tool was using scriptures when we pray. Both of these tools help us pray in agreement with God's will, which increases the possibility of our prayers getting answered. Today, we're going to learn about some more tools. Who wants to pray if you don't get your prayers answered? No one! Today, we're going to talk about a tool called faith. Faith is believing you have the answer before you can actually see it. I would like to share one of my experiences with faith. Just recently, I made someone really, really angry. That person did not want to talk to me and refused to forgive me. At the time, I prayed day by day, asking God, to soften that person's heart to forgive me. I, rep I repented and prayed, having faith that the Lord will answer my prayer. And true enough, God answered my prayer and eventually that person forgave me. I really believed and had faith that God will answer my prayer. 
let's talk about some things we have to take by faith that we can't actually see with our eyes yet. We have to take it by faith that there really is a heaven and we are really going there. We have to take it by faith that our sins are forgiven. We believe these things because God said them in His Word. Next up, we are talking about words have power. Daniel believed God answered prayers. Do you remember Daniel? He was the man locked in a lion's den with hungry lions. He believed God would protect him. But it wasn't until he was in front of the lions, he actually had to put his faith to the test. But God protected Daniel. Why? It was because Daniel had faith in God. God had answered a lot of prayers for Daniel over the years. He had time to build up his faith in God because of them. But he came to a very great test when he dug when he dug through some old prophecies in the scriptures and found out God had promised to rescue his people, the Israelites, from slavery. When he found the promise, he began to pray. He prayed for days and days and nothing happened. But Daniel had faith in God. He continued to pray until 21 days had passed. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. But he never gave up and he never lost his faith. God. Finally, on day 21, who appeared to him? It was Gabriel the Archangel. Gabriel told Daniel something very interesting. He said, Daniel, the very first day you begin to pray, God sent me to bring you the answer to your prayer. But the prince of Persia, which is a demonic spirit, stopped me and fought with me to keep me from getting through. This is a very important tool to think about when we pray. The tool is words that come out of our mouths. They have power. This story tells us that there are things going on in the spirit realm or in the invisible world where God and Jesus live that we cannot see or hear. We have real enemies called demons who do everything they can to keep our prayers from getting answered. Gibral told Daniel, I came because of your words, Daniel, and if you would have quit speaking, I would have had to go back to heaven. We must realize the power of our words agreeing with God's words. Next up is about never giving up. Daniel taught us about another important tool in this story. This tool is persistence or never giving up. Many times, when people pray, they give up after praying two or three times. If they don't see the answer to their prayer in a very short period of time, they quit and say, God did answer my prayer. But what really happened was they quit before God was able to get the answer to them. There may be times when we have to pray for years about something 
especially if the will of another person is involved. Also, there are going to be times when we have to pray past the unseen spirits who want to keep us from getting our prayers answered. Gabriel told Daniel, if at any time you would have quit praying, I would have had to turn around and take your answer back to heaven. But because you did not give up, I was able to break through the enemy lines and bring you the answer. The answer in this case was delivering the Israelites out of 70 years of slavery to a pagan king. That was a pretty important prayer. The more important the prayer is, the more determined we need to be to pray until we receive the answer because it may be a threat to the plans of our enemy, Satan, and his kingdom of darkness. Daniel had faith in God and knew God would keep his promise that Daniel had found in the scriptures. He was praying in agreement with the will of God. If we know we are praying in agreement with the promises in God's word, and we know we are being led by His Spirit as we pray in tongues, then we have to make sure we believe and have faith He's going to answer our prayer. Then, we need to remember the words out of our mouths are important and we have to keep speaking in agreement with God's word, always saying the same thing God is saying. Finally, we must remember to never give up. With all these tools, we can have confidence in God who will answer our prayers. Lastly, we are going to talk about fasting and prayer. There is a story in the Bible about a young man who was demon-possessed. This demon would completely take control of the boy at times. It will make him fall into open fires or throw him into water and try to make him drown. It would make the boy fall to the ground and give him painful and embarrassing jerks and muscle spasms. Foamy saliva would drool out of his mouth and he had no control over it. The father had taken his son to Jesus' disciples to have the demon cast out, but they couldn't do it. So, the father finally found Jesus and asked him to do it. What were Jesus' two commands? The first one was they had very small faith. But the second one was this kind only comes out through prayer and fasting. What do we mean by fasting? Fasting is when you give up something very important to you for a period of time to seek God and pray. In the Bible, it always meant going without food or water. Today, we have changed the meaning to include only certain foods or even activities such as using any electronic devices like TVs or computers. Fasting is very important discipline God expects His people to do. Setting worldly pleasures aside to seek Him. Fasting doesn't change 
God's mind on things, but it changes us. It helps us get God's perspective on things. It is another tool that we need from time to time to set things aside that keeps us from spending more time with God. Jesus fasted 40 days and nights one time. Reasons we need to fast include number one, repenting for ourselves or our nation. Number two, for a spiritual breakthrough in our lives. Number three, for healing or deliverance for someone. Number four, for a national crisis like war or slavery. God said, the kind of fasting I want is this. Remove the chains of oppression and the yoke of injustice and let the oppressed go free. There are some prayers which may never be answered unless you fast. Thank you so much for listening, children. I hope all of you understand what I said and what I shared and I can't wait to see you in Karis Kids again. Hi children! Today, I'm going to tell you a story about Parrot's runaway puppy. This day, Daddy is sitting at the table reading the newspaper. Mom and Grandma are putting dishes and food on the table for lunch. Parrot comes running in. I heard the phone ringing, Grandma. Did somebody find Freckles yet? No, Harold. It was my doctor's office reminding me about my checkup. Okay, be sure to let me know as soon as they find him. About turns to go, Mom said, It's time to wash your hands and come back for lunch, son. I'm not eating, Mom. I'm fasting until someone finds freckles. Fasting? You are fasting for your dog to come home? Herod? Son, it has been so long. It's a month since freckles ran away. You've got to face the fact. I know you love that dog, but freckles is gone. He's not going to come home. It's been too long. Herod with a big smile on his face. Sure he's coming home, Dad. I prayed. Herod, I prayed a lot of prayers in my lifetime. And I have learned one thing is that sometimes God says yes. And sometimes God says no. We don't always get our prayer answered the way we want them to. You just wait and see, Grandma. I know Freckles is coming home. How do you know, son? Because, Dad, the Bible says, whatever you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive them. And you will have them. And I believe. And he has a big smile. In a seat. Oh, I don't know what we are going to do about that boy. He's going to be so broken hearted. Well, he doesn't look broken hearted. I've never seen such faith in anyone before. I just hope he isn't setting himself up 
full of big disappointment. All right, let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Lord, for this fine food and health and strength. We ask you to bless it and bless us today. In Jesus' name, amen. The phone rings, Daddy answered. Hey, Tom, you ready for the golf game this weekend? You know it. You better get a good night's sleep for the night before. You're going to need it. Haha. <laughs> well, you're not going to win this game. No way. I'll see you. All right, at eight. Bye. Here it comes running in. Oh, snow. Was that about Freckle, Dad? No. Is about my golf game on Saturday. Oh, I don't want to be mean or anything, Harold. But you have to face the facts. Freckle may have been hit by a car or be dead in a ditch somewhere. Or someone could have picked him up and he could be 500 miles away here by now. Freckles is not coming home. Yes, he is, Grandma. God and I are in agreement together. I have his word on it. What do you mean, Harriet? Are you talking about that scripture again? That scripture. And I have also been praying a lot in my prayer language. And I had a vision in my heart about a man in a blue pickup truck bringing freckles home again. Son, we have caught every animal compound in the city and for 100 miles around. We have called veterinarians and posted his picture all over the city. No one has found him yet. Sooner or later, you are just going to have to give up, son. Oh, now there goes my phone. We need to turn those things off during meal time. Oh, I can't give up, Dad. Freckles is counting on me. If I give up, then for sure he would never come home. And I have got promise on it. Well, I have to hand it to you, Heather. I've never seen anyone so persistent in my whole life. If God answers a prayer for anyone, it will surely be you. You are not going to believe it. What? Herod, there was a veterinarian's office over in Tamamida. Someone came in today to get a dog dewormed and mentioned it was a stray that wandered into their house recently. They found Frankers! The vet recognized the dog from the poster. We left with them and still had it hanging on their bulletin board with our phone number on it. Oh, Freckles is coming home. Freckles is coming home. She said we should be looking for a blue pickup truck in about 20 minutes. Hooray! Congratulations. Thank God. You see, children? Can you identify the six prayer tools in this story? Herod has been praying in tongues and was fasting, never giving up, and he prayed in agreement with God. And he prayed a scripture. Herod has faith in God. I hope you will enjoy the story. Bye! Hey 
everyone. Well, there we have it. Six prayer tools that will affect the results of your and my prayer every day. Let us review what are the six prayer tools together. Tool number one, praying our heavenly language or in the spirit or praying in tongues. Tool number two, praying the word of God or the scriptures. Tool number three, faith. Tool number four, words that come out of our mouths or our declarations, the things we say out loud. Tool number five, perseverance, never give up. Tool number six, fasting. So you see, prayer is not complicated, but you and I need to be aware of the many things that will affect the results of our prayers. Because God doesn't just not answer our prayers. He is a God of strategies and He gives us the strategies to pray powerful prayers according to His perfect plan. Right now, I want us to all do a short exercise together. Firstly, find a quiet or private place of prayer where you can talk to God about some of the prayers that you may have prayed in the past but which were not answered or the results were not what you want. So right now, find a quiet place where you can pray and talk to God about this. Spend some time to ask the Holy Spirit to show you what are some of the possibilities of why this happened. And then, get a piece of paper and write down what the Holy Spirit is showing you. Let us all do this together for one minute. All right, well done everyone. Now that you have already um, prayed to God and to us and seek Him about a previous prayer request that wasn't answered the way you want to, let us right now focus in the now. Let us write down a need in your lives or in your family lives that you currently have. So write down one need on the paper. Now, List each of the prayer tools beside them. List each of the and list the six prayer tools that we have learned beside this need, and write down how you can apply these tools into this situation. Remember, if you feel that you need to fast for your situation, you will need to get your parents or guardians' approval first. Spend some time to pray in your heavenly language over this situation. Remember that you are praying the secrets of heaven when you pray in your heavenly language and God's word is piped down through you, speaking His will over that situation of yours. The thing is, we do not live in a perfect world and there are things that you and I cannot control. Guess what? God doesn't always get His way either. It is God's will to get everybody saved. But do they? It's also God's will that everyone live right for Him. But do they? 
Our God has given people something called free will. Can we say that together? Free will. That means that people have a choice to follow or not to follow what God says. And people also make choices that will affect you and I, whether it's good or bad. So we can only do our best to trust God and never give up and leave the results of our prayers to God. There are no absolute guarantee formula for answered prayers. We just need to trust God. Shall we all pray together right now? Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just want to commit all our friends in Karis Kids before your loving presence, before your loving hands and your throne of grace. God, I ask, Lord, that you will help us to understand the deep things of God. Help us to know, oh God, the secrets of your, um, of your kingdom and also the beauty and the strategies of praying, the prayer tools, using them, oh God, in our prayers. And to see, oh God, our prayer life increase to another level and that we will live our lives victoriously and in the freedom of Christ. And therefore, Lord, Holy Spirit, come and have your way in your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining us in our prayer adventure together. Don't forget to check out our activity pack for you this week. Here is the link to access it. Feel free too to watch our previous Prayer Power episodes. We hope that you have been blessed by them. God bless all of you.